So I'm COVID positive and <coughs> kidding. I'm okay. <laughs> Sorry for that little scare just now, but I didn't want this video to be so boring and gloomy. Anyway, yeah, I am COVID positive. Thankfully today I feel quite great and you know COVID is COVID so I'm gonna home quarantine until it's safe enough for me to go out and get infected again. Kidding, kidding, kidding. No more jokes, no more jokes. Now let me tell you what happened over the past few days and I'll be looking down a lot because I got some notes here because I can't really remember everything. So ever since Thursday my dad has been having coughs and a little bit of difficulty breathing just at night when sleeping. We thought it was related to the cough, that's pretty common. He contacted the pharmacist nearby remotely and I went to take the medicine and send it to him. I see my parents every few days to send medicine, food and just general checkup. Over the next few days, his condition was still present and at the same time, our driver at home tested positive. With those facts in hand, we decided to send my dad for COVID testing at Sunway Medical Center on Sunday. His test came back positive and they diagnosed him as stage one or two. Stage one or two is pretty minor and you can choose to do home quarantine if you like to. And that was also the advice from Sunway Medical because even if he was to be admitted, even if he wanted to, they were absolutely full. But my mom didn't feel comfortable with him quarantining, quarantining? Being quarantined at home because if there's any breathing, respiratory, respiratory related issues, it's not something they can manage at home. By the way, just for context, before things get very confusing, Aldrana and I stay separately from my parents, but we stay pretty close. So we made the decision that we wanted him to be quarantined in ideally a private hospital. So I got on the phone and I called as many nearby private hospitals I could find and none could take him in. It was completely full everywhere. And just to put it into context, a private hotel quarantine will set you back roughly around 15,000 to 30,000 ringgit. And even with that amount of money, at the current situation, you cannot get a bit in a private hospital. I know we've been hearing news about our uh, medical system being pushed to its maximum, but you really don't realize how severe the condition is once you, I mean, until you want to check someone in and you realize that your options are severely limited. At this point, my mom started reaching out to friends and relatives, and that's where we started having movement thanks to everyone's connections and contacts, we managed to secure him a bit in SGMC. So on that same night, my brother drove my dad, picked me up and we went to SJMC. I handled him alone because I know anyone else wouldn't be able to settle it fast and I can't have anyone stressed or emotional doing this or nearby me during this whole situation. So it was just me and my dad. After getting all the administrative stuff done, he was moved to the isolation tent where they did further tests and questioning. A few minutes later, one of the doctors called me and I knew he was not going to deliver any good news because he was like... And then he just whispered to me something very softly. It turns out that my dad's oxygen level was at about 90%. 95% is the minimum for a healthy person. By the way, these are all the facts that I got from the current situation. This is not medical advice, but this is just what I know and what I gathered from what was happening. So they fed him oxygen and his levels went back to normal. It was at 97% most of the time. With the latest development in the situation, his, his situation went from stage one to two to stage four. Keep in mind, he only had a bit of difficulty breathing at night when in fact his body was not getting enough oxygen. Now, this is the part where I need to detour a bit because I learned some really important things here. If you have elderly people or you are not that healthy, please consider getting a pulse oximeter. I bought this one for my dad, but 
It came a few hours after I sent him to the hospital. I hope it's in focus, I think it is. If I had this device, I could have detected his low oxygen level much earlier. We are very lucky to be considered fast acting, still fast acting, even though this was happening for about two nights already. Because low oxygen levels can lead to a million problems such as hypoxia, acute respira respiratory distress, collapsing, and ultimately death. So this device costs 165 ringgit, somewhere around there. I'll look for the best deals that I can find on Lazada and Shopee and put it in the description below so to make it easier for you guys. And a bonus tip, if you are using the latest Apple Watch Series 6, the blood, the blood oxygen sensor is actually built right in. So you can, you can track from there. It's fairly accurate. I've compared between these two. It's just that I don't have this anymore. I gave it to my mom. Is it recording? Now, back to the story. I had to make a decision on where to send him next. We all knew that Sungai Bulo, despite being full, was the best treatment facility. We also had a family friend who was willing to reserve a bed for him at Prince Court, but he told me that if his own family members had COVID, he would prefer them to be treated at Sungai Buloh. They have the best facilities to treat COVID. Anyway, I didn't get to follow my dad to Sungai Buloh because it's a high-risk area. They took the ambulance from SGMC direct to Sungai Buloh. By the way, the ambulance costs 600 ringgit, so that's one of the most expensive grab car rides ever. So I said my goodbyes and let them handle him from there onwards. I did the best I can and I can sleep comfortably knowing that, which I did. I slept so well, probably because I was so tired too. There's nothing much else to add for my dad. He got a bed, they gave him oxygen and medication. His oxygen levels were back to the normal range. Blood tests are okay for now. So let's get to me. It's pretty obvious that I am a super, super close contact of my dad, my family members as well. So on Monday, all of us went to take a PCR test. Everyone was showing some slight symptoms here and there. I had a roller coaster of a fever. You know, it went from normal of 36 to 38. And in fact, my body felt like it got hit by a roller coaster. So I was extremely lethargic and sore yesterday. But I realized that after moving around, sweating a bit, you do feel much better. That was pretty much it for Monday. Nothing much happened. We were all extremely cautious already. We were all quarantined at home and just waiting for the results. Now let's get to the next day. I woke up feeling normal, no fevers, very slight aching. I felt good, really, really good, like really normal. And then the results came in. In summary, everyone tested positive. I was not shocked. I already told myself that I am most likely positive. So the results didn't surprise me at all. That's another tip. If you are 50-50, whether your results are posit positive or not, just assume that you are. Then the results will either just not affect you or if it's negative, you'll be happy. Honestly, I can tell you that getting COVID was not my concern at all. I mean, I didn't care whether I get COVID or not. All I knew is I had to get my dad sorted and send him to the best treatment facility that is available. So yeah, I am positive. How do I feel? Pretty much the same. I'm going to be home quarantined for now, which is actually how I've been living my life since the first MCO anyway. So nothing much is gonna change. KKM is supposed to call me, but I'm not sure if it's anytime soon. They are very, very busy. So what you can do is you can self-declare it in your My Sejahtera app. Just click the help desk and then option F. Fill the details and upload your results. They'll validate the results and update your risk status. Two hours later. So KKM has texted me to verify that I am COVID positive. So what I think they did is they looked at my result that I uploaded and just verify that it's true. I'll have to do the daily questionnaires similar to the one I went through when I came back from Sabah last year. My status on my Sejahtera 
has also been updated accordingly. I am confirmed positive and asymptomatic. I'll put the screenshot up here. That is basically what I have for now. I'll do another follow-up video soon. Now we're just going to focus on resting because we do feel lethargic. I am very thankful that we have moved to the bigger apartment because there is more space, it's more comfortable and in fact we have a bike there and a treadmill there. Also, I just want to put it out there that I rarely ever go out for leisure. Most of the time, I'm going out for groceries, food, medical work and sending stuff or checking up on my parents. My work is also 99% of the time from home. Unfortunately, on Saturday, I was called in for emergency work because of a security breach. So other than that, I think I've been fairly responsible. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions or things you want to know more about, you can always drop me a comment and I'll see you guys for the next video. Bye.